In this experiment, I'm going to perform an isomerization on a molecule called carvone. This is the carvone molecule. Its formula is C10H14O. To perform the isomerization, I'm going to mix some carvone with 6 molar sulfuric acid, and I'm just going to allow the carvone and the sulfuric acid to heat under gentle reflux for about a half an hour. The product of this reaction has the exact same molecular formula as carvone, so it's going to be C10H14O, and because it is an isomerization, that just means that we're just simply rearranging the molecular structure. The goal of this experiment is to determine the actual structure of the isomerization reaction. The experiment itself is pretty straightforward, so let's just watch. We're gonna be starting with 1.5 grams approximately of carvone. I'm gonna be putting it directly into a 50 milliliter round bottom flask. So I'm gonna put the flask in that beaker to keep it from tipping over, and then I'm gonna tear the balance with the flask on it, and then I can measure directly into the round bottom flask. Our starting mass is 1.557. Here is the carvone that I just weighed out. I'm gonna add a stir bar and then nestle this down into the sand bath. It's important that the level of sand is at least as high as the liquid inside the round bottom flask to make sure that everything is being heated evenly. Now I'm going to add sulfuric acid. It's six molar and I've got 15 milliliters of it already measured out that's gonna go straight into the round bottom flask. So this reaction involves a ketone, the carvone molecule, reacting with an acid, the sulfuric acid. This is just going to sit and heat under gentle reflux for about 35 minutes. So I'm adding my water condenser, and once the water condenser is in place, then I'll get the water flowing. Remember the goal of this experiment is to predict the product of this reaction. So you wanna start thinking about, you know, what kind of products might be formed when we mix a ketone, such as carvone, with an acid, such as sulfuric acid. As a reminder of the water condenser, water comes in through the bottom port and out through the top port. So that tubing right there, I'm shoving it into a small sink. And this tubing I'm connecting to the water outlet. And then I'm just gonna hold the tube in place as I turn the water on to make sure that it doesn't fly off. And this will sit and cook for about 35 minutes. This has been heating under reflux for about 35 minutes. So the reaction is done. I'm gonna disassemble the glassware and let it cool down a little bit before I go through the process of separation and purification. Notice the pretty significant change in color, and it looks like we also now have two layers inside that round bottom flask. So the indication there, that the difference in appearance, definitely is an indication that the reaction is complete. So like I said, I'm just going to let this sit in an ice bath just for the purpose of cooling it down to make it easier to work with. And once it's nice and cool, then I'll begin the process of the separation. The reaction is done and right now inside of our round bottom flask we have our product molecule and we also have some water in there as well even though we didn't directly add water the sulfuric acid that we used in this reaction was a dilute solution of sulfuric acid in water and in addition to that there's probably going to be some other stuff byproducts leftovers things like that i'll just call it other stuff so our job now is to to isolate the product from this mixture we're going to begin by pouring the contents of the round bottom flask into a separatory funnel and also we're going to be adding a small amount of petroleum ether. Petroleum ether is just a mixture of hydrocarbons. There actually isn't any ether in it at all. The um, petroleum ether and the water are not soluble in each other and the petroleum ether is very low density. So the petroleum ether is going to be up on the top in our separatory funnel. This is what we're going to refer to as our organic layer um, and that's going to contain our petroleum ether 
our product molecule is soluble in the petroleum ether. So our product is gonna end up up in the top. And then down here on the bottom, this is gonna be our aqueous layer. This is gonna contain the water and um, the other, like the other stuff, the byproducts of this reaction, other stuff. Probably some sulfuric acid, things like that. So what we're going to do is um, separate these two layers. So once we've got a good mixture, like I'm gonna shake this up quite a bit, what we're trying to do is get the product out of the aqueous layer. So originally the product is gonna be in this aqueous layer, but as we shake it up, the product is gonna move up into the organic layer because it's more soluble in the organic layer. So that's where it wants to be. So after shaking it up quite a bit, I'm gonna drain this out. I'm gonna drain the aqueous layer and kind of set it aside. And then I'm also gonna drain the organic layer uh, and set that aside. The organic layer, as a reminder, is where our product is located. I'm going to take that aqueous layer and I'm going to actually put, put it back into the separatory funnel uh, along with another round of petroleum ether. So I'm basically going to repeat this entire process. We're going to get the exact same situation. Two layers. The top layer is going to be the organic layer. That's going to contain the product and petroleum ether. The bottom layer is going to be the aqueous layer. The reason that we're doing this twice is that maybe in the first round, not all of the product made its way into the organic layer. Maybe there's still a little bit of product left in the aqueous layer. So we're going to try this again. Uh, we're going to take, um, when we drain this out, we're going to take the organic layer. Let me get a different color going here. Uh, we're going to take that organic layer and we're going to set it aside. Well, actually, first we have to drain the aqueous layer out because it's on the bottom. So we're going to drain that aqueous layer and set it aside. This aqueous layer is waste. It's just going to end up going into the waste container. We're going to then drain the organic layer out. And what we're going to do is combine this organic layer with the first organic layer that we removed. So we're going to take that organic layer plus the first organic layer, which I wrote in pink. We're gonna take both of those organic layers and put them back into the separatory funnel again for another round. This time, instead of adding petroleum ether, I'm gonna be adding sodium bicarbonate solution, NaHCO3. The sodium bicarbonate solution is in water. So once again, we're going to get an aqueous layer that's down here on the bottom and the organic layer that's up here on the top. The purpose of this particular extraction is to remove any acid impurities, so any sulfuric acid impurities or whatever that might happen to be present in the organic layer. Also, it is possible that our product of this reaction might be protonated just due to its you know, proximity of sulfuric acid to begin with. So the product itself might be acidic and when we react it with the sodium hydro or sodium bicarbonate it's going to deprotonate our product so we'll shake this up again and one last time we'll take that aqueous layer and we'll get rid of it um, and that's actually there's so many arrows here that last aqueous layer is also going to be waste the organic layer which at this point should be just our product and petroleum ether. And this organic layer, I am going to put, well, first I'm going to use some uh, drying agent to remove any residual water that might be present. And then once I do that, I'm going to put it into an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, the whole thing. I'm going to cover it up with some film and poke some teeny tiny holes inside that film. The petroleum ether is going to evaporate out of this solution and all that I will be left with after evaporation is just a pure product which then I can characterize. So first I'm going to pour everything out of the round bottom flask into the separatory funnel. It's this nice kind of amber sort of yellowish brown color. Once I get that transferred, I am going to get a little bit of the petroleum ether. That's what we're gonna use for the first extraction. And to help make sure that I'm getting everything transferred into the separatory funnel, I'm gonna pour the petroleum ether into the round bottom flask, swirl it around a bit, and then transfer it into the separatory funnel. That just kind of helps me get a cleaner separation. Now that the petroleum ether is in there, you can really easily see the two layers. Remember the top layer is the one that contains our product and petroleum ether. 
Shaking this up, getting our product to move into the top layer, into the petroleum ether layer, waiting for a good separation. Now that our layers are separate, nice clean separation, I'm gonna drain the aqueous layer first. That's the one that's down on the bottom. And set that aqueous layer aside. And then the organic layer, I'm gonna drain that next. And I want the organic layer to be really, really pure. So that's why I drained a little bit of the organic layer into the aqueous layer, because I don't care if the aqueous layer is not pure. I'm gonna set that organic layer aside. Aqueous goes back into the separatory funnel. Petroleum ether again. This second extraction is just to make sure that all of the product is getting transferred out of the aqueous layer into the petroleum ether layer. Notice this time really different color for the top layer. That means that the first extraction was really successful. Most of the product got removed in the first extraction. Once again, we're gonna wait for the layers to be separate, get a nice clean separation. The bottom layer, the aqueous layer is coming out and that is waste, it's garbage. Once it has been completely drained, then I'm gonna take that organic layer and I'm gonna add it to the first organic layer. So I'm just mixing the two organic layers together with each other. Both of those organic layers are going back into the separatory funnel for one last extraction, this time with the sodium bicarbonate. This is a 5% solution. And remember in this situation here, we're just deprotonating product in case some of the product happened to be protonated. There's a little bit of bubbling going on there. It's not a ton, so it's not super visible. Um, the bottom layer is the aqueous layer. Top layer is the organic layer. Uh, shook it, swirled it a little bit. And again, this is just to deprotonate our product and to remove any acidic impurities. We'll wait one more time for a good separation. And now the layers are separate. I'm gonna drain the aqueous layer one more time. The aqueous layer is just going to be waste. Once the aqueous layer has been removed, then I'm going to put the, the organic layer into its own beaker. This is a very clean beaker. And I'm going to treat this organic layer with some drying agent, anhydrous sodium sulfate. This drying agent will absorb any residual water that might be in that organic layer. In this process, as a reminder, we're just scooping a small amount of the drying agent in, swirling or stirring the, the mixture. And what I'm looking for uh, here is that the, I'm looking for the point where the, the drying agent, the white solid, does not clump up anymore. So I'm kind of looking at it as I'm stirring it, waiting to see a point where I have some free granules um, that don't clump up. It, when it absorbs water, it clumps. So once it stops clumping, that's how I know that it's done absorbing water. And when this is completely done, I'm going to very carefully transfer just the liquid. I'm gonna leave the drying agent behind. I'm gonna transfer the liquid into a clean Erlenmeyer flask so that it can sit and evaporate out the petroleum ether. So here's the, the product from the isomerization of the carbon molecule. It's been sitting for quite a while so that the petroleum ether could evaporate. And what I'm gonna do now is get a mass of the liquid that's left behind. The product of the isomerization is a liquid. And so to, to weigh it, um, it would have been smart if I pre-weighed this flask and then I could just weigh the flask right now, but I didn't do that. So to weigh this, what I'm gonna do is just transfer it into this empty flask. I'm gonna start by tearing that little empty flask and then I will just transfer this liquid. And then this is definitely gonna cause me to lose some of my yield because I'm not gonna be able to get it all out of the original flask. You see there's still some in there. And also now some of it is gonna be forever stuck inside this little tiny pipette. 0.812 grams. We're gonna take the IR of this product of the isomerization of carbon. And the IR is gonna help us identify the molecule and also to determine its purity. I've already collected the background, so we can just go straight to the spectrum. Kind of looks like there's an OH peak here. Uh, 
Um, what I, one of the things that I'm going to do is change the, the uh, scale of the axis. Right now it looks like the peaks are pretty strong. The peaks are pretty weak and that's pretty common when taking the IR of a liquid. It's just hard to get a good sample on there. But so, so in a reference spectrum, these peaks are probably going to be quite a bit more intense. So what we really want to be looking for here when we're matching this up is um, the pattern of the peaks, peaks in the same location, things like that. But uh, otherwise, it looks like a really good spectrum, so I'll just um, save this for analysis.